Hello, it's Jason Payne for Cold Banker, Dean Hopper Realtors. Today I'm back at the one acre section of Vintage Oaks because I have an out of state client who's interested in finding a lot out here. And man, these lots go fast. But the lots we're looking at today are going to be addresses 1412 and 1408 Corkscrew Court. There are some dogs in the house next to us, uh, but uh, anyways, let's go check out these two lots. All right, as I'm filming this, it's about five o'clock on 29 November. So the sun's getting ready to set here pretty soon. These are the puppy dogs at their end of the section. Now the first lot we're looking at is gonna be lot 158, which address is 1412 Corkscrew. It is gonna go virtually where this fence line is back and it's gonna wrap around this cul-de-sac and then kind of go back I believe this tree is going to be on this lot as well, looking at the plot map. And I'm going to include the plot maps for both properties because that's the other property we're looking at on the final on the one of the final slides. But it's going to kind of cut back off this way. So if I were to be building a house here, this middle section would be where I want to build the house. So let's go down. There is a slope at the beginning, a pretty like a incline at the front but that's not the end of the world because that's just your slope down on your driveway and then it levels okay not leveling off it's still going to go from the front to the rear but it's not a dramatic drop off there will be obviously some steps in the back of the property all right so if this is where the house would be i would definitely get rid of that tree and we've got a nice little space here that's not, like I said, it is sloped from the front to the back, but not too dramatic. And um, you would have a really nice oak, I'm sorry, hitting some rocks. The grasses are pretty tall right now. <laughs> but you would have a nice, uh, some gorgeous oak trees off to the side of this property giving you a little separation from the neighbors and your house probably would be, depending on the size of the house, this would be right on the left-hand side of the house, house facing the cul-de-sac. And this would be the area and another nice set of trees kind of right in the back part of the house. A pretty little oak tree there. Oh, um, these lots are right at one acre, and they're asking 145k for both of them. And we go down into a little bit of a drainage area back this way. So I don't see any property markers. Sorry, moving a little bit fast. But I think it would probably stop kind of back where little drainage areas. Let me if I can find a way back there. And I wouldn't, we don't have, uh, it's not a real creek, it's just a water drainage for the community. But overall, it's not a bad. This is on the propane side of the community. So yeah, all of this would be on the lot. And for my client who's interested in this, uh, if you did get this lot under contract, you would have a 10 day option period to be if you wanted to fly in to kind of check it out after you had it under contract. And during that 10 days, you could back out for any reason whatsoever. So using me to find a lot, getting it under contract, and then kind of come looking at it that's up to you to see. That's one way of doing it. I have had buyers buy something without ever seeing it because they lived in Germany and coming in, flying in from Germany to see a lot wasn't a good idea, but they did just recently come into town, saw the lot that they bought a year ago and they're very happy. So I still don't see any marking sticks. We'll just kind of have to look to see the terrain, but you can see this, there is some water drainage 
that comes through this area. Not too much. Not like it's a big creek. It looks like the neighbor's got a pool set up back there. It's kind of neat. Anyways, all right, let's go back up. See, someone's been feeding some deer back here. And man, there are a lot of deer in this neighborhood. Because I'm coming out here and it's almost dusk. That's when you definitely see a lot of deer coming out. Oh. Oh. More dogs. Yay. So that's some, another reason why you always want a realtor coming out. You would hate to buy something and then check it out to see who your neighbors are going to be. So yeah, if you've got dogs, great. If you're looking for like this complete quietness, <coughs> well, when you go in the backyard, these dogs won't see you. And really those dogs probably won't see you unless you're all the way at the edge. See a little game trail there. All right, where we are would be kind of that ideal spot to be building a house in between that big oak tree. Kind of in front of that tree there and in between this oak over here. So that gives you a really nice footprint without having to take out any oaks to kind of do what you want to do with this lot. And I would definitely take out this tree. But the sun, as you see, be setting on the front of your house, which in Texas is really where you want it because you want that shade on the back of your house during the summertime. Right now it doesn't matter because the weather is absolutely gorgeous. But yeah, that's what I would do if I owned this lot is building it right in between those two trees. And you can see those trees on this final slide after I shoot both of these lots because they're both side by side. All right, back up onto the cul-de-sac. So you're not gonna have a ton of neighbors. You've got this guy across the street and another person building there. And this lot's where we're gonna head next. All right, anyways, the lot we just walked, that is the 1412 corkscrew, lot 158. Like I said, it's gonna go from that fence line until right about where this tree's at. So good thing about having an oak tree right on the property line is there's no need for that tree to come out at all. It just needs cleaned up and it'll be gorgeous. But right in front of us will be a great spot in between that tree and those over there, kind of right, right smack dab behind this little uh, juniper tree is where I would put that house if I were owning this lot. It's gonna be a more wide than deep lot, but uh, all right, let's head on to the next lot. I'm gonna combine both these tours in one video. This lot here, starts kind of right where this tree's at and this is 1408 cork screw court also one acre also asking 145 for it but you can see kind of the drop off from uh, the road both of them were going to have that so they'd have to build up your driveway as you see kind of the neighbors did there have the driveway built up going into the property you'll have a little bit of a decline coming into it but you can make it gradual. But let's go check out this lot. And this lot's gonna go all the way up to close to where that house is at. Or kind of right where my truck is located. So once again, a rectangular lot, more wide than deep. But you see, you've got a drop dead gorgeous oak tree back there. Let's see if there's ways, a spot to put a house on this lot. Because once we get back here, this is relatively flat. 
it's a gradual slope from the front to the back. So you will have some steps on the back of the house. But well, once again, there's the sun setting would be on the front of the house, creating ideal shade in the back. Now, to save a tree, you want to make sure you've got 10 feet of clearance from the house. So even cleaning this up, the back of the house ideally would be kind of right where I'm at. So your house would be pretty close to the front of the street, depends on how big that house is. And most of the times you're gonna have a either 20 to 50 foot setback. So that tree will be borderline and be kind of a little close, but uh, we definitely would have to get a builder to kind of come out with an idea of what you'd want it to build on it to see because you can see where the back of this house is. And that's a good example showing they, they were able to save that oak tree in the back because you've got a little bit of clearance. I can see they cleaned it up some. But uh, yeah, I'm standing at that back edge and parallel to the road. So this tree is like, hmm. Gosh, I'd hate to see this gorgeous oak go. But let's see what else is back here. As you get further back on the lot, it does start to slope down a little bit more. But once again, not too dramatic. So this would be like your backyard area. <clears throat> and we got kind of more of that water drainage space. So you really don't want to go, definitely don't want to be building back here, but during the, our heavy rains, you can see this is where the water kind of runs through. No standing water, so you're not gonna be worried about, oh my gosh, all the mosquitoes that might be out here for standing water because this runs through. But it would be kind of a cool little place for kids to kind of climb around and play. But uh, might be a little, not too worried about snakes, but uh, they do tend to hang out at water sources, but I wouldn't let that scare you away. We don't have a, yes, we do have snakes here, but they're not all over the place. But. I also would not be sticking my arm underneath that crevice there. So that's a good rule of thumb. If you see the little crevice for rocks, don't stick your hand in there and you'll be okay. And always watch where you step. All right, man, I wish, hope that uh, whoever buys this lot is able to save that oak tree. But man, we got another gorgeous one back here. So that's a really nice looking oak tree as well. Let's make sure I'm not crossing where I think the property line is for that first lot. Nope. So, like I said, I think this is the property line coming right back through here. Okay, yeah, that's it. This tree should be on this property line kind of yeah should be on your property because it looks like property line is going to be right around here just based on the last screen that I'm going to be on this slide so you will have at least one really good oak on this property line but if you built you're able to build a house up close enough or angle it the right way you might be able to still save that oak tree. But overall, it's like, yeah, you have a slope, pretty good slope right at the beginning of the property and then it less slopey. But this is going to be the 1412 corkscrew court. 
going from kind of right in front of where this oak tree is at, halfway on that cul-de-sac, all the way to where that house is. So, depending on how you shape the house, or if you made a little H-shaped thing, that oak could be kind of a centerpiece on the house. Options, all I could do is options. All right, that's gonna wrap up the tour of these two lots that are on the market as of late November, 2021. Remember the lot behind me is address 1412 Corkscrew Court, lot 158. And now as we swing around here, the next lot is address 1408 Corkscrew Court, and that's lot 157. Both of them are nice lots. They're not the most wonderful, best lots ever, but they're also priced pretty damn well at 145 because most of the uh, lots you're seeing now are in the 190s or higher. So yeah, if you're interested in these lots, let me know. And uh, hey, if uh, my client passes on this, I will make this link public. And if you're watching this as public, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and as always, keep sharing with your friends and family. All right, talk to you soon. Take care now, bye.